So I come at this from a kind of rationalist perspective, which leads me to, I think, a more radical view, which is the rejection of, of distinctions in general. One, one aspect of the difference as I see it, I, I, I really love the kind of uh, instrumentalist or pragmatist kind of view you have, and you're, uh, uh, you're against realist metaphysics, and that's, that's all to the good. But one respect in which I might differ from you is that you, you're offering a non-realist account, an explanation of how language works. And I love the fact you apply it to sensation and perception as well, because I think that those are all continuous. But you're still in the explanation business. And, um, and there, you're trying to explain how language really works. And um, part of my critique of realist metaphysics is uh, a critique of the notion of uh, how things really work. Um, so for me, um, these kinds of explanations that, that you're appealing to presuppose distinctions, presuppose relations. And if, if relations and distinctions are unintelligible for the reasons I was saying earlier, and, and, and you said that you come out of your you come at your non-realism through a different means. I think that's that's certainly true. Uh, so I come at this from a kind of rationalist perspective, which leads me to I think a more radical view, which is the rejection of, of distinctions in general. So I think that your appeal to uh, explain how language works that that presupposes an explanation of how things really work, and uh, that presupposes relations, which I think are 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 challenged. Uh, by I understand. So. Um I would say in response to that, and indeed this was a central thing in developing the theory of closure, because my first book was about self-reference. So of course the, the puzzle of self-reference and the position of anyone who holds a non-realist is absolutely front of my thought in thinking about doing it. So I would say I wouldn't use the language that you use there, so I wouldn't say that I'm trying to say how language works in provide a definitive theory. Because, of course, that is using the language of realism. I would say that I would use the language that I apl applied generally to our understanding, the, 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 the account that I gave initially of the, how, how closure works, to the theory itself. So I would say, in a way, I'm giving you a metaphor of how you can see the way that language is functioning. And, of course, I don't think this is a final version of how it is. Um, but I think it has a lot of strengths and it enables us to uh, give an explanation of how things function. And what's more, I think there are practical consequences of holding the world in the framework of openness and closure. I think that it, it I argued, this is, I uh, published a little bit more than 20 years ago, and I argued at the time that it, was, it would be using this framework uh, possible to build an intelligent machine. Um, I didn't get drawn into the consciousness debate, but I thought you could you could build an intelligent machine using the principles of closure. And indeed, AI has moved very much in that direction. So instead of trying to get computers to see what we see out there, as if you know there is a glass and there are people, and we've got to get the computer to sort of see the glass and see the people, instead we, we allow the machine to make distinctions based on its own uh, way of framing that data, whatever input it's taking, and to make uh, similarities and identities on the basis of which it can intervene. And uh, this was a breakthrough in our understanding of how you might be able to get a machine to identify visual, visually uh, identify objects. And it's proved enormously successful. And uh, you know, uh, that was what I, I thought would be the consequence of uh, the sort of framework that I was operating. But I'm not saying this is, a, this is a description of how things are, because I would have just fallen back into a realist mode of thinking my theory is the truth about the world. I'm, not, I'm just saying here is an account which enables you to make sense of what's going on without um, imagining that the world is divided into bits out there and there's a right answer that we might get. So the world is sort of like full of 
possibilities and some of them do things for us, uh, interesting, useful things for us and therefore we say yes, this is working, this is right or temporarily yeah. right and then when we have different desires, needs, wishes and they fail we can then go out and you know if we're not too constrained by our existing sort of frameworks we can go out we can search for more like a computer would just scan everything as data atoms and reconfigure it and reframe our problems our results etc michael how does that how does that sound to you how, how do we kind of explain the you know sort of realism as, as maybe a metaphor you know a temporary metaphor does work in the world that 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 is useful um that language communicates, that science has results, or are we still just over obsessing on this explanation thing? Is this a problem for you? Yeah, I, I think it's still a problem for me. I, I, I do really appreciate the kind of pragmatist outlook that you, that you have here, Hillary. I think that that really is is quite attractive uh, um, because uh, this pragmatist outlook is just has, says give up the kind of realism, just just try to find out what works. So try to engage in our talk, our kinds of stories that we tell, with an, any kind of realist pretensions, I think that's all to the good. Um, but uh, I think that my view actually leads to a kind of skepticism that I think perhaps that, that you wouldn't um, go all the way with. And the kind, by skepticism, I mean a kind of conceptual skepticism, where skepticism about the coherence of certain concepts that we ordinarily employ and, and you yourself were employing some of these concepts and when you, when you say that you can teach the computer to make certain distinctions. So there, the, you're, you're, you're helping yourself, to, and this is fine, but you're helping yourself to the concept of distinctions, the concept of relations. And uh, so the kind of critique that I'm offering, this kind of rationalist critique, is meant to undermine those concepts, th those very concepts that you yourself are using in, in your overall pragmatist kind of framework, which I, which I really like. It's because it's non-realist. But the, but the kind of conceptual skepticism that's going on, it's sort of driven by my rationalism, would call into, into question the coherence of the, the very concept of, of distinctions that, is, is being sent, that are central to your kind of account. So if I'm following, I mean, would there come points where we just have to say, this is there and it works because it works and just stop trying to reach for that explanation as to why? Right. So, so Yes, I think that's so. Really, this kind, of, this kind of rationalism that just starts me out is a rationalist critique of rationalism itself, wow. because right. the, the <laughs> rationalism leads to a rejection of the notion of of relations, and in particular, since the notion of explanation presupposes relations, because you explain things in terms of things, in terms of their relation to things, then uh, it's a rationalist undermining of rationalist explanation itself, and so. Uh, and that, that's the, the depth of the conceptual skepticism. So I, I think we, we are coming at it from different motivations, and so we're coming up with a general non-realist position, but I think my, my view might lead to more of a kind of skepticism about the whole kind of explanatory project that, that you might be engaged in. What do you think the explanatory project is, in the sense that I don't see myself engaged in an explanatory project? But, I, I uh, see myself as trying to um, uh, the phrase is make sense of, but not in the sense of saying that we have sort of ended our oh, no, of description right. of things. It's a, it's a way of, I mean, we all have to work out how to live, don't yes. we? As a baby, we've got to make this distinction between what's food, what's not food. Um, if we don't make uh, distinctions of those sort, we're in all sorts of trouble. Um, there are people who actually suffer from those sorts of deficiencies. Um, uh, so uh, I think it seems to me we need distinctions. It's just that we shouldn't imagine that they reflect uh, reality, that we operate as if this is a glass, and then you, we, can, we can all make sense of that. But we could, we could, we could hold it totally differently. Um, and W that will be a different distinction, as it were. So it's not like each of these distinctions are, are real. They're just ways that we can operate in order to be able to achieve outcomes that we want. So could I so, um To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.